so today is the fourth class of chemical bonding and molecular structure so in this class i will discuss about uh, the polarity of bond i will discuss about the polarity of bond and the whisper theory so first of all the polarity polarity of bond okay so depend on the polarity of bond we can we can divide the bond should be polar and bond should be non polar okay but in the reality there are no such bond which is 100% which is 100% polar and which is 100% non polar so this is not possible okay this is not possible that uh, one bond is 100% is polar uh, one bond is 100% is non polar okay this is not a possible there should have some polarity there should some non polarity character now the question is that why 100% uh, is not possible uh, in the reality because there is a vibrations uh, there is a vibrations uh, energy if you see the vibration energy of the every bond this uh, curve is like that okay always the vibration is there between the two bond so because of this vibration uh, of this bond between this atom so suppose let us consider here uh, the two atoms is there uh, one atom is a another atom is b these two atoms are bonded is it is a covalent bond okay so this bond so this bonding electron pair is shared by i uh, by the b atom and also is shared by the a atom so it is a covalent bond but due to the due to the vibration of the bond uh, of the bond this there is so, so it is a covalent bond so uh, due to the covalent bond covalent bond okay the covalent bond and this a and the b atom is equal suppose the a atom and the b atom is equal so we will say it is a non polar it is a non polar bond it is a non polar bond but in reality it is not the 100% non polar bond because due to the vibration of the bond okay so due to the vibration of the bond and due to the vibration of the bond this covalent bond should have the some polar uh, it will have the some polarity uh, suppose somehow it is a delta positive it is a delta negative somehow it is a delta negative it is a delta positive charge so positive and the negative charge it will be there but it will be the very very the less uh, for the non polar bond so now the consider the covalent bond okay to the covalent bond the covalent bond is the two types it will be polar covalent bond and one will be the non polar covalent bond okay so one is the polar covalent bond and another is the non polar covalent bond now the polar uh, first consider the non polar covalent bond the non polar covalent bond is that when the same atom when the same atom are bonded to each other bonded to each other bonded to each other by a covalent bond okay like the ace two cl2 n2 o2 is the hydrogen atom is there and this is also the hydrogen atom so both the hydrogen atoms are the forming a bond this is a covalent bond and because of that the same because of the same atom is there so it will be the polar covalent but again but again in reality this is not a 100% polar covalent bond now uh, sorry this is a non polar sorry this is a non polar covalent bond so again in reality it is not a 100% uh, 100% non polar covalent bond now the polar covalent bond like a h uh, so if you see the lewis structure of the h molecules so what is happening here this hydrogens atoms will be one electrons we know that 
and fluorines has the seven electrons. So they are forming this H and the F is forming a bond. Is it is a covalent bond? It is a covalent bond. It is a covalent bond because this bond is shared by the fluorine and this bond is shared by the hydrogen. It is a covalent bond. But but the sharing the uh, but the extent of uh, sharing by hydrogen and the fluorine is not equal. It is not equal. That means that how much this this bonded electrons bear. Uh, whatever amount is sharing by the hydrogen, it is not equally sharing by the fluorine. So what is happening here? This hydrogen, we know that the electronegativity. Here the term is coming. This is a electronegativity. Okay, we know that fluorine has a greater electronegativity than the hydrogen. So due to the higher electronegativity of the fluorine than the hydrogen. This bonded electrons, this bonded electrons will be towards the fluorine. Okay, so it will be these bonded electrons will be shared by the more uh, by the uh, fluorine atoms than the hydrogens. That's why, that's why uh, these bonded electrons will be towards the fluorine atom. Uh, it will be far away from the hydrogen atom. So when the sharing is not equal. By the hydrogen and the fluorine, then the electron density, then the electron density, then the electron density on the hydrogen atom and also the fluorine atom, uh, both will be not equal. Will be not equal. So, so because of that different electron density, uh, because of that different electron negativity, there will be charge. On the hydrogen and the fluorine, the charge will be this is will be the delta positive and this is will be the delta negative. Uh, so that is called so 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 it is called so it is called uh, polar covalent bond. Polar covalent bond. So this polar covalent bond is forming due to the difference of the electronegativity. So that due to the difference of the electron density. Okay. So due to the presence of the difference electronegativity between the hydrogen and fluorine, and fluorine is the more electronegative than the hydrogen. That's why the bonded electrons is towards the fluorine. Okay, so there will be uh, there is a creating a charge, and this is the negative charge, and this is the positive charge on the fluorine atom and the hydrogen atom respectively. So, so this is a covalent bond, but it is a polar covalent bond, and this is a non-polar covalent bond. So this is a thing. Uh, now, so there is a polarity. So this polarity is coming. H and the F. This is a HF molecules due to the presence of this bonded electrons here. So this bonded electrons is sharing by the fluorine atoms more extended than the hydrogen atom. So that's why it is a delta positive charge, and this is a delta negative charge. So here the polarity is coming. So define the polarity. Which molecules is the more polar? Which molecules is the less polar? So to define the polarity, uh, uh, we will discuss about the dipole moment. Uh, we will discuss about the dipole moment. So so this polarity is defined by dipole moment. So this is a dipole moment term. So the dipole moment. So dipole moment. What is the dipole moment? The dipole moment is. It is designated by the mu equal to charge into distance of the separation. What is that? Actually, this is a mu equal to q into r. So suppose let us consider the HF molecules. This is a positive charge. This is a negative charge. So what is the dipole moment of these molecules? So first. The charge is Q. It will be the one. It's a positive charge. It's a negative charge. So charge will be the one. And now you have to calculate the R. Distance the R between the H of F. Okay. So this is the fit into R. Okay. So this will be the. So this will be the type of moment. Like 
uh, if you see if you see uh, so c is the so so this is a dipole what is it dipole when equal to q into r q equal to charge and r equal to distance okay so now the unit of this dipole moment unit equal to coulomb into distance equal to meter so this will be the coulomb uh, this will be the coulomb and this will be the meter and somehow uh, if you see the dipole moment is also designated by the d dy okay it is the uh, dy so 1 dy equal to 1 dy equal to uh, 3.33564 into 10 to the power minus 30 kilom into meter. So somehow it is designated by the, this dipole moment is designated by this dy. Otherwise it is has a unit kilom into meter because we know that dipole moment is the charge into distance of the two molecules. Okay. So now how the dipole moment is how the dipole moment is defined. So let us consider let us consider this HF molecule. Okay. So this dipole moment is popularity of this molecule or the dipole moment is defined by this one arrow. This is a arrow. So in this arrow, in this arrow, by this arrow, we can define the dipole moment of the molecules. How this term, if you see this arrow, this arrow is uh, will be towards more electronegative atoms and this will be for less electronegative atoms. Okay, so for that case, the each of molecules, uh, the dipole moment is defined by this arrow. Okay, so this is the two atoms is there. So for that each of molecules it will be designated by that. Okay, because in this molecule, uh, two molecules is minimum the two molecules is needed now. Uh, sorry, two atoms uh, is needed for that uh, to make the molecules. To make a molecules, we needed two atoms. So here the HF is a molecule where the difference between the electronegativity of the H and the fluorine. Fluorine is the more electronegativity than the hydrogen. That's why this bonded electron is towards the fluorine atoms. That's why there is creating a polarity. So this polarity is defined by this dipole moment. So this dipole moment is defined by this arrow. Okay. Now let us consider there are the uh, two and the three atoms is there, like water, water molecules. So for that water molecules, what will be the dipole moment? What will be the uh, dipole moment? So if you draw the structure of this water molecules, it is like that. So they are, if you see. This is a hydrogen and the oxygen. This is a hydrogen and oxygen, and we know that oxygen is more electronegativity has the more electronegativity than the hydrogen. So that's why this bond. So there is a two bond is that this is the OH bond. This is the OH bond. Okay. So this for that OH bond, this bonded electrons will be there in that position, and for that OH bond also, this bonded electrons will be that position. Okay. Because Oxygen is the more electronegative than the hydrogen. That's why this covalent bond also will be the polar and this covalent bond also will be the polar because the electronegativity difference and this bonded electrons will be towards the oxygen. So the dipole moment of the bond will be that one. So the dipole moment also of the bond is like that. Okay. So now what is the resultant of this molecule? What is the resultant of this dipole moment? So the resultant dipole moment of these two will be that one. So the resultant dipole moment is towards that side. Okay. So this is a bond dipole and this is a resultant dipole. So there is a two dipole. This is a bond dipole. There is a single single bond is there and every every bond will have a some dipole moment. So the dipole moment is designated by like that. Now of this dipole moment will have a resultant dipole moment. So this is a resultant dipole moment. So the new dipole moment for that molecules equal to for that water molecules equal to 1.85 divided. Okay. Now another example, if you consider 
BEF. Okay, beryllium. So, first you have to know the structure of that molecule. So, this is a structure the, of the molecule. So, if you see, this is a two atom, this is a two bond. So, this one is bond and this one is bond. Okay, so there is the two bond of the beryllium and the fluorine atom. So, this is a one covalent bond, this is one covalent bond. But if you see the electronegativity, fluorine is the more electronegative than the beryllium. So the bonded electrons will be close to the fluorine. Okay, so the so the dipole moment of this bond will be like that, and also the dipole moment of this another E bond is like that. Okay, if you see the dipole moment of the two bond is opposite to each other, so the, the direction is opposite. Okay, so the direction of this of this dipole moment is like that, and direction of this dipole moment is like that. Okay, so this direction, so this is this is the these are the opposite direction, opposite direction. Direction is different. So that opposite direction of the two dipole moment. Okay, so opposite, so two dipole moment is different. For the first case, if you see the direction of that dipole moment is like that, and direction of the dipole moment is like that. So this two dipole moment direction is towards one way. So this is the direction is the same. But in that case, in that case, the direction of the dipole moment is the clearly opposite. And if you see the angle of that dipole moment is 180 degree. So the resultant dipole moment will be the zero. So here the resultant, the resultant dipole moment equal to zero. Because the two direction, the direction of the two dipole moment is totally opposite, eh? and the angle between these two, uh, two dipole moment is 180 degree. That's why it is a uh, the resultant dipole moment will have the zero value. Now, if you consider the BF3 molecules, so first you have to draw the structure. So this is the structure of the BF3 molecules. So if you see the fluorine, boron. This is fluorine, this is fluorine. So the electronegativity difference, if you see the fluorine is the more electronegative than the boron. So this bonded electrons will be close to fluorine. Similarly, here also, similarly here also. So that if you draw the dipole moment, so I am here that drawing the dipole moment direction. So this is the direction of the dipole moment of this BF bond. So for that BF bond also we'll have the direction of the dipole moment this like. And this is also like that. Okay, you see this two be bond. First, if you consider this two be bond, so for that two be bond, the direction of the two dipole moment is similar. So the resultant dipole moment is equal to like that. Okay, so the resultant now. So this is a resultant dipole moment. So this is a resultant. Dipole moment of two B bonds. Okay, so this is a resultant of the two B bonds. If you if you see now, so this is a one dipole moment. This is the resultant dipole moment. So if you see the direction of that two dipole moments is the one now the two. Now the direction of one and the two opposite. Okay, that's why the neat dipole moment of BF3 molecule equal to zero. Okay, so first of all, you have to draw the structure and you have to draw the direction of the dipole moment of the each bond. Now you have to consider the resultant dipole moment of the whatever dipole moment is there, you have to consider the resultant dipole moment. Okay, so, so to draw the resultant dipole moment, uh, you have to consider the direction. If you the you see the directions of the and the two dipole moment is totally opposite and the angle of that is 180 degree then the resultant dipole moment will be the zero okay so now the another example if you see in a stream only, ammonia for that ammonia case you first have to know the structure of the NH3. so this is the structure of NH3. okay so if you see so every lone pair will have a dipole moment. So the direction of this 
dipolement of this lone pair is towards lone pair. Now, if you see the nitrogen and the hydrogen, nitrogen atoms is more electronegative than hydrogen atom. So, nitrogen is greater than hydrogen. So, the bonded electrons will be in that position. So, the dipolement of that NH bond is toward like that. This dipolement of the NH bond is toward like that. This dipolement of the NH bond is toward like that. So, if you see the resultant dipolement, whatever dipolement is there, whatever dipolement is there now. So, the directions of uh, four dipolement is equal. So, it is a uh, it is a one way. Uh, the, the direction is same. Uh, so, the resultant dipolement, if you draw, it is like that. So, the resultant dipolement will be towards the lone pair. So, here the mu is the dipolement is not equal to 0. So, the knee dipolement is not 0. So, the dipolement value will be 4.90 into 10 to the power minus 30 kilogram into meter for that ammonia molecule, NH3. Now, consider the NF3. This is the NF3. So, every lone pair will have the uh, dipolement. Now, the fluorine is the more electronegative than the nitrogens. So, the bonded electrons will be here. So, the bonded electrons will be here. So, the dipolement directions of that NA bond is like that. This is also like that. So, if you if you see the direction of the three dipolement is opposite to that, the direction of the lone pair dipolement. So, if you consider this dipolement for that lone pair and if you consider this dipolement for that resultant uh, dipolement of the 3 in a bond. Uh, so, this dipolement and this dipolement direction is totally opposite. But, but, uh, this 3 dipolement, the value of that resultant of that 3 in a bond dipolement is greater than this the lone pair dipolement. So, it will be cancelized by this uh, lone pair dipolement, but it will be not zero. It will have the sum value, but it will be not the zero, it will be the sum the value because this resultant dipolement value and this resultant dipolement value is not equal. Okay, so it will have the sum value, but it will be the cancelized than the NF bond. So, but it will be the less than that one. So, the dipolement value is 0 0.80. 10 to the power minus 30 kilometer to meter. Okay, so this is the difference between the this is the difference of the dipolement between the two molecules. One is the NH3 molecule and another is the NF3 molecules. So in this way, we have to we have to draw the structure and you have to first consider the electronegativity of the two atoms, uh, which will have the more electronegativity. Uh, this bonded electrons will be towards that. Then the dipolement arrow you have to draw. Uh, according to the direction of the dipolement, you have to draw the resultant dipolement. Then you have to consider the dipolement will be less and the now there will be so this is a dipolement case. And another thing is that the very important thing. So what I have discussed here, this is for that covalent bond. Okay. First the covalent bond. So covalent bond is the Two types it will be the polar or it will be the non polar. So, polar means what is that, and non polar means what is that. When the, it is a non polar, then if you see it is a non polar, then there will be the similar atom will be bonded hydrogen, H2Cl2, and 2O2. And for that polar case, it will be the different atom. There will be the difference of the electronegativity between the two atoms, like the HF molecules. Okay. So, the covalent bond is two types, one is the polar covalent bond and another is the non-polar covalent bond. So, for that case, here I have discussed the sum dipolement, then I will go to the ionic bond. So, if you see the covalent bond will be the polar and the non-polar. It is the polar and the non-polar. So, when it is a polar, that means that means uh, every covalent bond for the every polar covalent bond will have some ionic character. 
similarly for the ionic bond similarly for the ionic bond also have partial covalent character okay the partial covalent character of the ionic bonds was discussed by the Fajan rules in terms of the following terms. So, just as the all the covalent bonds have the some partial ionic character, similarly, 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 this ionic bond also have the some partial covalent character. So, the partial covalent character, this partial covalent character of ionic bond will be discussed by Fajan source. By the Fajan source. So th this is the important term. What is the Fajan source? So according to the Fajan source, according to the Fajan source, first point is that the ionic bond. Ionic bond means that suppose A and the B. A and the B there is the ionic bond. So it will be the positive charge, it will be the negative charge. Like the NaCl. Na plus Cl minus. Like the case here, potassium plus Cl minus, like the lithium iodide, lithium plus iodine minus. So every ionic bond will have some cations. Some okay. So when will we will have the covalent characters of the ionic bonds? Okay. When the smaller the size of the cations and larger size of the anions then the greater covalent character of the ionic bond. What is that? Suppose, let us consider, this is a AB molecule. Okay. So, in this AB molecules, it is a ionic bond is there. So, this A is the cations and B is the anions. Okay. When the A is the cation, will have, will be smaller in size and the B is the anion, will be larger in size okay then the covalent character of the ionic bond will be greater okay so the ionic bond will have the covalent characters okay so when these covalent characters of the ionic bond will be greater then the cation the size of the cations will be very 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 small than the anion then it will have the covalent character now so this is the thing. Another point is that charge. The greater charge on the cation, the greater covalent character of the ionic bond. Okay. So what is that? So suppose this is the charge, cation charge. So it is a small size, but the charge is the high. But this anion, it has a larger size, but the charge is the very, very low. So what will be happen when this charge is the very very high of that cations and the small charge then effective the nuclear charge also will be the high for that cation case then whatever electron density is there it will be pulled down by this cation okay so then what will be happen so then the polarity then the then this will be the polarized so then this anion then this anion will be polarized by cation Okay, when it will be polarized, then the size will be like that. When it will be polarized, then the covalent character, then the covalent character will be greater than ionic character. That means it will have the, this ionic bond will have the some covalent character. Because when the charge is the, when the charge also will be the high of the cations and the size is the very, very small than the anions, then it will polarize the anion uh, so it will have the you no know, uh, circular shape of the anion uh, whatever electron density around this whatever electron density around this anion uh, so this electron density will be polarized like that because this charge of the cation is the very very high and the size of the cation also the very very small so because of the high charge and because of the small size these anions will be highly polarized by this cation then the covalent characters of the ionic bond will be there. So this is the two rules. Because of that, because of that um, high charge and the small size, the covalent character of the ionic bond will be the high. Another point is that, another point if you consider, for the cations of the small size and the charge, the 
the one with the electronic configuration of n minus one d to the power n n is zero. Uh, uh, okay. So what is that? For the transition metal, if you see the transition metal is the more polarizing than the another. If you see the covalent one, so is the NaCl, Na plus Cl minus ion. So it is a alkali metal. Like if you see the FeCl3, if you see the FeCl2, if you see the NiCl2, if you see the CoCl2, every metals are the transition element. These are the transition metal. Okay. If you see the transition metals, the electronic configuration in minus one d to the power n is zero. So it it, it has the greater electron greater electron density get our electrons than alkali and the alkaline earth metal so because of that because of that for that for transition metal for the transition metal case for the transition metal case uh, uh, this metal is the more polarizing this metal is more polarizing than other okay so for that transition metal case, it will have the greater cooling character than the other. So the cations share the polarize the anion and pulling the electron electronic charge toward itself and thereby increasing the electronic charge between the them. So it is so that's actually I have always the telling is there. This is the cations and this is the anions. When this cations charge is high and it is will be smaller, then it is it the polarize this anion. Whatever electron density is there, it will pull the electron density from the anion side to the towards. So when it is the polarized by these cations, then the sides will be like that. Okay, so it will be like that. Okay, so this is a polarization. This is a polarization, and thereby the increasing the electronic charge between the two. So this is the precisely what the happens in a covalent bond. Okay, that's why actually covalent character increasing. Okay. So, so there are the ionic bond. So this ionic bond also will have the uh, covalent character, but this covalent character is, but this covalent character is uh, discussed by the father school. You see, there is the two point. Another is the first of all, if you if you have to know that this ionic bond is means there will be the cations and there will be the anions. Okay, so this cation will have the small size and it will have the sum greater electron density, some charge, greater charge than the anion. So for that the smaller charge, for that the smaller size and the greater the charge than the anions, it will pull the electron density from uh, the anion. So it will the polarize the anion. So when it will be the polarized, okay. So it is a polarized means that uh, this electron density is not, uh, it, it, it is the, it is a distributed okay this electricity is the really the distributed between the cations and the anion so then the covalent characters uh, between the cation and the anions will be the best so so first of all uh, there is the two things one will be the small size and there is be the higher charge of the anion okay so because of that two reason uh, the covalent character of the ionic bond will be so in this talk I have discussed about the covalent bond and this ionic bond. This covalent bond is the two types, this is the polar covalent bond and this is the non-polar covalent bond. And also if you see the covalent bond also will have the some ionic character. Similarly, the ionic bond also will have the some covalent character. And this covalent character is discussed by this other schools. So here I will stop. The class and from the next class uh, I will discuss about the Vesper theory. Uh, it is a very interesting. Uh, so Vesper theory, what is that? Uh, the Lewis Stroh structure. With this, if you see the Lewis Stroh structure, so this Lewis Stroh structure actually uh, not. It is it is just about the structure. Oh, it will uh, it uh, it will not give the any stability. Uh, it will give the not any um, deformation of the structure. Just it get, it gives the structure is that there is the lone pair how much lone pair is there. But by this Vespa theory, you can uh, also uh, determine what is the geometry of this molecule. What is the angle between the 
uh, uh, two atoms is there, what is the bond length will be there, and uh, uh, how much it will be the deformed structure, and then the actual structure. Okay, so uh, in the next class, I will discuss about the Hesper theory. Okay, uh, thank you very much.